Okay, I have pressed the go live and record button. It's just not coming up on Facebook, so hopefully you can hear me. It indicates that you can. So I'm going to keep going. Hello, welcome so much. Uh, I am so excited to share this with you today. Last week, I gave, went over part one of a trading plan. Now, what is a trading plan and why should you have one? A trading plan is really important if you are trading anything, stocks, Forex, crypto, etc. If you don't have a trading plan, you are really shooting yourself in the foot. Uh, as it says in the description, um, you know, you, if you don't have a plan, you're, you're planning to fail. And like many people these days, actually even before these days, planning to fail is just not an option. The turbulence of the world right now is too crazy and you have to be able to create your own life and learn how to, uh, you know, potentially uh, generate additional income. And trading is one of those ways to do it. Now, as you can see above, I am not a licensed financial advisor. I am not responsible for your choices when investing your money. If you are going to invest your money, please be sure that you do so with money that you do not need for things like rent, water, etc. right? Make sure this is meant money that if you lose, if you choose a, if you choose a trade that goes in the wrong decision or wrong way, that it's not going to impact you uh, too terribly, right? Results of other people do not guarantee nor determine your own success. It's based on your level of comfort for risk, based on your level of education and so many other factors. I'm simply sharing with you today because I want you to win. I want you to win online. I want you to win with trading. I am a firm believer that you were meant to have a lot of success and I want to share what I know um, so to help you get there. So, and by the way, I had to say all that because I live in America and it's, I'm supposed to, it's a legal thing. Okay. So last week, like I said, I shared part one of some questions that you can ask yourself when you are looking to make your trading journal. Now, this is part two because I do want to try and keep this as short and concise as possible. And so if you want both parts of this training, put TPT, that's Tango Papa Tango, down below, and I'll be sure to get that to you. Now, if you're watching this on replay somewhere else, uh, you'll have to contact me over on my Facebook page in order to get that um, or just reach out and uh, we can figure it out. All right. So uh, last time we left off with, oh no. Oh no. Did I go too far? Oh yes. So last time we left off with what percent of your account would you be willing to risk on one trade? I'm not going to go over that. I'm going to go to the next one. Okay. So the next question is, how much do you want to risk in a day or for a week? So depending upon where you're trading, Forex is open 24 hours a day, five days a week. Uh, if you're trading crypto and other alt currencies, uh, then it is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right. So um, you want to determine how much you're willing to risk per day as well as per week. Now, why do you want to do it for both? Well, let's say that you are willing to risk 3% per trade, 9% uh, per day, and 9% per week. Well, what if in one trade, excuse me, in three trades, maybe you, maybe you lost three trades in one day that were 3%. That means that you hit your, um, you hit your max on your trades, you hit your max on your day and your max on your week. So that's why it's really important to also make sure that your, um, everything else is in alignment, right? Last time we talked about what percent should you risk in a trade. It's best to do one to three. I personally use one to 2% because even just one to 2% with the, when you understand how compounding works, uh, that's huge, right? So, so you want to make sure that your appetite for risk on a single trade percent wise, your appetite for risk for your day and for your week are in alignment. Because again, if one trade knocks you out for the week, you put in too much into that trade. So how much do you want to risk in a day or a week on your trade? Now, uh, next question, how will you manage the trade once you're in it? So this is also really easy. Um, it won't be easy to, to if you are new. Um, but basically, you want to know when you get in the trade. Actually, you should know this before you get in the trade. You're, you should know, you know, what is your spread, which, I've already, which I covered this in another, in another video. If you don't have it, um, let me know that you'd like the, the basic training. But you want to know wh when you get in, what you're going to be your stop loss and what's going to be your take profit and when will that change? So the only reason that would change is if it's going in your favor and you want to increase take profit, but also secure the bag, i.e. make money off of that original trade. 
or it's go it's going worse in your favor and you don't want it to go and you've and you've noticed that it's probably going to keep going and you don't want to lose anymore so those are the two ways that you would that is that 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 would change so you manage it by a couple different ways one you could sit at your computer or your phone all day i personally don't want to do that i have so much more going on in my life that i don't want to be glued to the charts all day right i already have a full-time day job i already have a business i do not need to be on my computer any more than i already am or my phone so um you want to make sure that you have things in place that will alert you. If you have a paid version of TradingView, it can alert you up to a certain number of limitations, um, but you can also set certain apps to notify you and all kinds of stuff. So you can be notified when it goes to a certain certain um, level if you wanted to, right? You know, if you wanted to know when you're getting close to your TP or maybe close to your stop loss, right, to mitigate your loss or to maybe get into another trade if it's going in your direction. So there's some ways that you can manage your trade is, is um, being alerted um, or watching, watching the, the um, charts. Okay, what is your exit strategy? So in your, in your trading journal, you need, not your journal, in your trading plan, you need to know what your exit strategy is. What's it going to look like if it's getting close to your stop loss, are you only going to go out when it's like halfway down? You're going to wait till it just hits your stop loss. What are you going to do when it's going in your favor? And are you going to re review that chart? Or are you just going to let it go? Right. Um, how are you going to exit? What's what's going to cause you to get out? How will you know when you've hit your target? Right. And so that includes things like does it hit your TP. Is Are you hitting your percent for your, for your trade? Are you hitting your percent goal for the day, for the week, et cetera? These are things to keep in mind, because once you hit your goal, you could keep going. Right. Or you could take that time to study and improve or go do other life things. Right. Because this is not meant to replace your job with time. It is meant to be an option to eventually potentially replace your income. OK. So um, you need to know when you're going to hit your target and all other things like that. Next question, how much trading will you do a day and a week and a month? So this is really totally up to you. If you want to become better at it faster, you're going to do more trades. Make sure that you understand that this also comes with some emotional risk, right? Because if you do a whole lot of trades and you try and do it really fast and you're really stressed about it, your RAS system, your reticular activation system, is not going to be your friend here, right? So you need to make sure that you are giving yourself some time to decompress, giving yourself some time to learn, giving yourself some time to grow, and that you're not on these charts all the time. Because again, it's not going to do you any good to keep keep looking at the things that are already frustrating you when you're already having maybe a bad day, right? Because you're not going to have good days all the time, at least not until you're really good at it. And even then, I'm sure even the pros have some bad days. So you need to know how, many, how much training you'll do per day, per week, and per month. Next question. You want to describe your ideal trade setup, i.e. your confirmation checklist, which we'll go over um, probably next time. So you want to have a confirmation checklist, which means, hey, these boxes, either three out of five boxes are checked and so I get in, or maybe all boxes are checked and so I get in. What is your confirmation checklist? What is your ideal trade setup? Next question. What currency pairs will you trade? Do you have pairs that you won't trade? These are questions to consider, and you may not be able to answer them right away because you just don't know the pairs, right? And if you're not using the system that I use that has the mentorship, the training, the tools, et cetera, it could be a lot harder to know how those pairs are trading as well because some trade, some pairs trade really fast. Some pairs only do really well at certain times of the day. Um, some pairs do terrible, and so you're waiting around forever for it to do anything. So you want to make sure that you know which pairs you will trade and which ones you won't. There, um, depending upon who you're following, like I have several different people I can follow with that um, education system that I was talking about, and some of them trade certain pairs, and other people don't trade those pairs. So again, it just depends on you, your trading plan, all kinds of different stuff. But you want to have an idea of which ones you will and won't trade. Like if you're a newbie, you probably don't want to trade gold. Okay. All right. Um, are there days, weeks, seasons you will not trade? So is there holidays? Is there family vacations? Is there anything that you know that you may not be able to have internet for? Um, is there any downtime you want to have? Any sessions that you want to go to, like which if they would be um, uh, sessions that you won't trade, like maybe, maybe the... Um, uh not the australian yeah australian maybe it's the australian session that you don't want to do because it's too slow or maybe it's whatever session it, it, um you want or don't want to do it's like these are things you want to consider 
because then it helps you decide, oh, well, during eight to 12, my time, you know, I'm not, I'm going to be doing something else, right? Those things, those things will help you uh, figure out when to trade and when not to. So next question, how many positions can you have open at a time? So this is really dependent again upon you. Um, do you have, if they all failed right now, would you hit your daily, daily, uh, limit? Um, what, how much percent do you have per trade? If you put 3% in each trade, then you've got 9% of your account at risk. And that's a lot at risk, right? So those are some things to consider as well. How many positions open at a time or how many of the same, uh, pair? Because if you have three open of, let's say Euro JPY and it com completely tanks and all three of them are now in the red, right? How many are you going to have open? Which, by the way, if they were green, you should have snagged the, uh, snagged the bag and moved into profit because moving into profit helps ensure that you don't lose anything. If it's only a pip or two, uh, it's better than negative, right? Okay, what will you do for personal development? This is a huge, huge thing. So huge. I'm almost done. I only have three more questions. Personal development is so huge. You have to learn patience. You have to learn to be consistent. You've got to learn to be a better person, right? When, as you become and grow a better and a better person, all facets in your life will improve. The way that you talk to people, the way that you deal with charts, the way that you see things, right? So your personal development is critical, not just in your growth in learning how to trade and what to see with your trades, but just again, as you as a person. This is so huge. I can't stress this enough be sure that you have a personal development training plan. Okay, second, uh, next question. What will you do with the money that you make from trading? So this is really important because if you, first of all, if you don't, and I don't know about other countries, but if you don't ensure that you save at least 25% of what you earn for taxes, you're going to get bit really badly when tax season comes around, okay? So you want to make sure that you save at least 25% for, for taxes. I am not a life and financial advisor. I am not a tax professional. I'm simply sharing with you what I do as part of my trading plan to make sure that I'm not in trouble. Now, again, talk to your tax person and find out what you need to be doing for that. They may say something different. I also would say that until you start making a certain amount in your account, I even wouldn't pull it out. The reason for this is because the more longer you keep it in, the greater your opportunity to make more money will be. This is because of something called compounding. I'm not going to get into this, but it's super important because there are lots of people that try and make it seem like, oh, well, you are only so great because you are able to pull out $1,000 a month or $1,000 a day or whatever. But pulling out that $1,000 really pulls out your ability to make uh, more trades, to make better trades, to do all kinds of stuff. So I personally wouldn't do it until a certain point. But again, it's up to you. What are you going to be doing with that money that you will be earning with your trading? Okay, second to last question. How will you keep records of your trading? I actually have uh, a giveaway on this. So if you want your um, uh, your own version of a, a trading journal, just say journal down below and I'll be sure to get that to you. Um, so how you keep records of your trading. And then finally, how will you monitor your trade? So this is kind of touched on a little bit earlier, but you want to think about how often you're going to check your phone, how often you're going to check your computer. Um, you don't want to sit there and babysit your trade because so many things will happen, right? You'll start to doubt yourself or you'll start to get super excited and then make wrong decisions, right? You'll get, your emotions will get involved. And so you want to make sure that you're not sitting at your computer. You want to make sure that you monitor your trade as minimal as possible, which is why I mentioned yeah, earlier that you want to make sure that you are alerted to certain things that happen with your trade. So that is it for part two of this two-part training on how to create your trading plan. If you enjoyed what you saw today, if you learned something today, please give this a thumbs up or maybe even a heart, sprinkle it amongst your friends, maybe some groups that you think people would benefit from. And I would love to know what your trading plan looks like. I, it's so great to be able to learn from other people and see how other people are doing things because again, you have the opportunity to grow as well as to create community. And truly when it comes to community, the, the system that I'm a part of has an amazing one. They're always up to help. They're always providing, you know, what they see in trades. And it's so awesome. So if you want information on that, please do let me know. Either send some, send a message below, send me a direct message, whatever the case may be. Um, and then finally, last but not least, I do have a group that you are welcome to join. There's a link somewhere above below this video. Would love to see you on the inside. Uh, last few days, I've been giving a sneak peek into some of the tools that I'm using. So, um, so that's in there. So thanks so much. Have a wonderful and prosperous rest of your day. And I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.